I would like to talk in this short message about something which is very dear to my heart, something which I find frustrating if I'm honest with everybody. And this something is the belief which a lot of people have that if they are good enough, they will get to heaven. Or rather, because they are not bad enough, they will get to heaven. We've all heard people say, well, I'm a good person. And they compare themselves with other people around them. And they compare themselves with historical figures. Uh, and they say, well, I'm not like that person. I'm OK. That person won't go to heaven. That person will certainly be in hell. But I'm not like that person. I haven't done those sorts of things. So I'm OK. Well, that is setting up, of course, that it's a wrong approach and it's uh, unbiblical it's nowhere to be found in the bible yet people want to believe it because ultimately people want to go on when they leave this life to a better place they want to go on to heaven although they don't know really what heaven's going to be like except it'll be wonderful it'll be a place of paradise and they don't really know how to get there either except by their own goodness which they think they have. They think they possess inherent goodness. And they don't, of course. We are all by nature uh, bad. Uh, we are all by nature actually children of wrath. The wrath of God is upon those who are disobedient and who do not come into a, a loving, intimate relationship with the Father through the Lord Jesus Christ. But we've all heard people talk along these sort of lines that, well, yes, I'm going to heaven because I'm OK. I haven't robbed anybody. I haven't killed anybody. I haven't done this. I haven't done that. And therefore I'm OK. No, that's setting up a standard of self-righteousness, setting up one's own belief system and one's own way of getting to heaven when one leaves this life. In a previous message some while ago, I talked about righteousness. Maybe you would think that this message today is going to be a development therefrom. Well, I don't know. Maybe it is. Maybe it isn't. But let's have a look at a couple of passages of the Holy Scriptures, which we must do. The first one is in Romans, the letter of Paul to the church at Rome. And it's in chapter 10, uh, the final or some verses uh, towards the end of chapter 9 of the, the letter or the book of Romans. And Paul is saying here, what shall we say then? This is verse 30, Romans chapter 9, verse 30. What shall we say then? That Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness, attained righteousness, that is a righteousness of faith. But Israel, who pursued a law of righteousness, did not reach the law. Why? Because they pursued it not by faith, but as it were, from works. That sums it up quite nicely, and I'm not going to go into the history, <coughs> excuse me, uh, of the, the, the Jewish nations and, and the, the Jewish people and the Gentile nations. Suffice it to say that the Jews were God's chosen people, and they still are, by the way, but I'll just put this in the past tense because the Romans was written in the past, of course. The Jews were God's chosen people and any uh, racial group, any person who was not a Jew was called a Gentile. And Paul is contrasting here the two approaches and he's saying that the Gentiles who did not have the, the Torah, the law of Moses, the law of God, the first five books of the Bible, the Gentiles, because they lived outside the Jewish way of life, the Gentiles who did not pursue righteousness, they attained righteousness. So they, they, uh, they attained something, they obtained something which they were not striving to get. And how did they uh, achieve this? Well, they obtained it by faith. And this is the whole story of how we come into a relationship, isn't it, with Almighty God through faith in what the Lord Jesus did in order to rescue us from our own sinful states. Wonderful. It's good news. 
It's the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. It's the gospel of Almighty God. <clears throat> so the Gentiles, those people who did not have what, what we would call the Bible, in those times it was the Torah, the, the, the teaching of God, the standard of righteousness which God expected of his people. The Gentiles were, were unaware of that because they were not living in, in the land which God had given the Jewish people. They were not uh, even expected to read and understand the Torah because they didn't have access to the Torah. But nonetheless, they obtained this righteousness, not by striving and achieving and willpower, but they achieved it by faith in Jesus Christ. Contrast that with the Jews here called Israel in verse 31. But Israel, or the Jews, who pursued a law of righteousness, that they actually, they thought they were good enough, they, because they tried to keep the law in all its areas, they did not reach this standard of righteousness. Why? Because they pursued it not by faith. They trusted in their own abilities they trusted in their own willpower they trusted in their own standing as the chosen people of god but when we come to god in our own way in our own strength we will not obtain the righteousness which is available from god we have to give in we have to give up we have to surrender we have to repent of our own very sinful natures turn from ourselves, give up our own selves, repent, do a complete U-turn and face God fully and apologise and say we're sorry for, for rejecting him. We're sorry for misunderstanding him. We're sorry for doing things our own way. Even we are sorry for thinking that we, are, we will get to heaven because we are good people. We are sorry for thinking that we will get to heaven because we are not bad people. And we repent of that. We understand that that will not get us to heaven in any way at all. And we come to Almighty God and we thank him that the Messiah, Jesus Christ, was punished in our place. He took the punishment and the wrath of God, which we as people absolutely deserve because of our rebelliousness, our stubbornness, our wickedness, our evil intents, our thoughts, our actions, uh, even thinking that we can get to God ourselves. All that belief system is anti-biblical. It is not contained in the Bible. Almighty God rejects that totally, and the wrath of God abides on such people. Come to the Lord Jesus is the message in the, in the Holy Bible, come to the Lord Jesus, repent and accept him as your saviour and come into this relationship and you will be given righteousness. The only requirement really, well, perhaps there are two requirements, is repent of yourselves, have faith in Jesus Christ and you will receive the gift of eternal life, which is righteousness and Almighty God will then see you as righteous. This is what the Bible says. This is the wonderful good news. We don't have to go around doing this, doing that, doing the other, or by our willpower, stopping ourselves doing this or that in order to come to faith in Christ. We just come to faith in Christ, acknowledging who we are, sinful, messed up, and acknowledging the supremacy, the superiority, the divinity of the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did. That's when we receive the righteousness of God. He, he views us as being righteous. <clears throat> Let me look at, <clears throat> excuse me, another scripture. I said we'd look at a couple in this very quick run through, uh, really how to get to heaven, I suppose. I might, I might choose to entitle this particular message. In the letter of Paul, Paul wrote the letter to the Romans, as we know. Paul also wrote a letter to the church at Philippi. And the, the, the book in our Holy Bibles, or the letter, is called Philippians. Chapter, <clears throat> chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3, verses 7 to 9. Let's just read those. Philippians 3, verse 7. 
But whatever things were gained to me, these I have considered as loss for the sake of the Messiah. More than that, I consider all things to be loss in comparison to the surpassing value of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Because of him, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I consider them garbage or rubbish, in order that I might gain Christ and be found in him, not having my righteousness derived from the law, but one that is through trusting in Christ, the righteousness from God based on trust. Scripturally, faith in the, new, in the latter scriptures, the New Testament, we, we call them commonly, faith and trust, two words in the English language, they come from the same one word in the Greek language. So we can, this translation I'm reading from talks about trust, but your translation, if you are reading from one, might probably say faith, but it's the same word in Greek. And it's the same principle. Faith involves trust. It's not just a, an academic um, faith, faith that, that, that comes um, in a the, the, on a theoretical basis. It is a practical faith, which is trust in Christ. So Paul, who wrote these letters under the inspiration of Almighty God, of course, but he was the human author. He was saying that he had a righteousness not derived from obeying the law because that's not possible because it's not possible to obey all the law of God and if one fails in one area of the law of God then the whole law is regarded as having been broken so Paul was saying that he hadn't he didn't have a righteousness um, which he'd obtained from keeping all the law no but a righteousness that is through trust in the Messiah trust in Christ. This is the part of the gospel message which I've shared with you today. The righteousness from God based on trust. So there we have it, straight from the, the Holy Bible. That's why this is something which is very dear to my heart, because the, the Holy Bible is very explicit. As I mentioned at the beginning, it, it's clear. It, it talks about how we get to Almighty God. Uh, and, and yes, it, it is frustrating to me that people think they will get to Almighty God. They will obtain this righteousness. They set their own standards that they don't want to comply maybe with what's in the Bible. They, they, they are ignorant of what's in the Bible and they simply think that, well, I'm OK. I'm good enough or at least I'm not bad enough. So I will get to be with God. But that's not the case. The gospel message is as I have explained fairly briefly in this message, and it's a righteousness, eternal life, which we obtain through faith, which is trust in what the Lord Jesus Christ has done for us.